And now, here is singer-songwriter, broadcaster, audio-video artist, entertainment agent, and your host for the Dharmic Evolution, it's the master storyteller himself, James Kevin O'Connor. And welcome back, everybody, to the Dharmic Evolution. Hey, today, this is really exciting. We're in Roma, Italy, with Linda Gambino. Oh, yeah, baby. This is going to be awesome. Singer-songwriter born in Roma, Italy, and raised in the U.S., in the big cities of New York, Washington, Boston, Los Angeles. And after a college degree in political science achieved in Italy, she decided to go back to the good old USA and sign up at the prestigious Berklee College of Music in Boston. She then returned to Italy, began a live performance career as the lead singer of pop, funk, soul bands, and smaller acoustic settings. Her voice was on all major Italian FM radio stations and national TV channels for a commercial campaign where she was chosen to sing a cover of Fleetwood Mac's hit, Don't Stop, produced by composer Federico Landini. Then in 2013, she started writing her own songs. She wrote and released Out of My Bed, produced by Luigi Rana, that went on rotation on the most important national Italian FM radio station, R-A-I-1. That's R-A-I-1. In 2013, in collaboration with Dutch producer Sherman de Vries, she wrote 10 original songs. One of them, Invisible, won a songwriting competition with Jim Donaldson Publishing in Nashville, USA. Everybody ends up in Nashville, don't they? Everybody good, that is. In 2014, she recorded and produced three new songs with co-writers Mike Verona and John Denny in Nashville. Fast forward February 2015, Linda was selected to showcase at the Millennium Music Conference in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, where she performed singing two of her original songs. Then in March 2015, she celebrated her birthday in the village in New York City by performing at one of the clubs. Then in 2016, she released her first album, Momentum, on all digital stores. Then November 2017, she released her new single, Revolution, now on FM and web radios all around the world. She's in the process of releasing a new EP with five songs, and in the meantime, performing in venues in Italy. But today, we're breaking out the brand new release. It's its debut time, baby. Yeah, it's called Freedom. So you better strap up your seatbelts, and let's go for a ride with Linda Gambino. Are you a singer-songwriter, author, speaker, or thought leader? Have you been looking for a platform for your career? Well, the James O'Connor Agency has exactly what you are looking for. Find out how we write and produce big, amazing songs on Music Row for authors, speakers, thought leaders, and organisations like non-profit and corporations. We also help singer-songwriters and artists by giving them a platform on Dharmic Evolution, a podcast designed specifically to broadcast your global career, now in 71 countries and with more than 161 episodes of artists all over the world from all genres. We know how to reach your target audience. Are you a dreamer like James? Then reach out today to james at thejamesoconnoragency.com and find out how we can help your global career. So tell me, how is life for you in Italy? I see you're, I mean, you you got such a fascinating story. Tell me, how's uh, things going so. over there? <laughs> That's great. Well, let's say that today is finally a beautiful day in Rome because it's been really rainy and really crazy weather. Uh, but today is finally almost like summer. So that's a good day because today is the day of the release of my new single. Yes, so. and we're going to we're going to feature that. It's a world premiere, ladies and gentlemen, a song called Freedom coming out brand new, hot and heavy from from Roma, <laughs> Italy. I'm so happy for this. This is great. Oh yeah. So I um, want I want to ask you about um you you were like um you came to the United States and yeah. you went to Berkeley, but before that, you were yes. interested in political science and you, you actually studied that as a major in, in college, correct? 
correct, correct. So how does a girl go from being a political <laughs> science major to being a international world pop star? How does that happen? Uh, yeah, yeah, that, that sounds so good, yes. It, it uh, is. Well, <laughs> uh, well, the thing is that um, even though my father uh, really loved music and singing, and so did my mother, he was uh, really like, you know, keep your feet on the ground. So uh, right. uh, he wanted me to get a degree, like a proper degree. And uh, I've always been lucky because, uh, as you know, I lived in the States when I was a child. Right. And I learned English very easily in like probably 10 days, a few weeks, watching cartoons when I arrived <laughs> at the beginning in uh, Washington, D.C. was the first uh, city where I lived with my parents when I was a child. And so, like, they were really envious because after two weeks, I was speaking English and they couldn't even, you know, they were they could put together something, but not easily. And so um, as I was fluent in English and, of course, in Italian, I always worked in things that were like international. And so political sciences had that kind of uh, vibe, let's say. Right. Yeah. And uh, exactly. I majored in political sciences, uh, international affairs. But. Uh, I Wait, left that. I got to. I got to stop you just for a minute. You said yeah. you learned to speak English in how many days? Watching cartoons, really, really, really fast. You know, because I was I was three years old when I got to the states. Can you send and, me the uh, cartoons that you watch? Because I want to start today. <laughs> <laughs> Well, maybe I'm, you know, I have a, a talent for foreign languages. I think I do. Yeah, you uh, must, yeah. I, you know, language and music, they're, they're kind of similar, you know, musicality. And um, and so it was, yeah, it was easy. I would like to actually learn some new foreign languages, you know, like maybe Portuguese. I like that, yeah. Like so how many, how many languages do you currently know? Do you... No, I speak Italian because I'm... Uh, mother tongue Italian. I, speak, I can speak English. Right. I can speak a little bit of Spanish right. because um, I was I was married to a guy from South America, Carlos. And uh, I can speak just a little bit of French because I studied it in, uh, in school. Yeah. It's always so fascinating to me that, you know, the Europeans, um, it's, it's no problem for two, three, four languages. You know, it seems like everybody does that, you know, and we're a little spoiled here or lazy in the United yeah. States because, you know, yeah. English is the, is the international business language. So it's kind of yeah. like, well, I don't have to go out of my way, but it, it's been on my radar for a long time to learn Italian because I think Italian is the most beautiful language I've ever heard. It's just amazing. Like that? Yeah. Very romantic. <laughs> what do you like? Like when I say, uh, ciao, James, come stai oggi? Yes. Yes. Italiano, ti piacerebbe impararlo? Did you just tell me you're going to make me a large pizza? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I can't make really good pizza, but I can make good pasta, though. Well, whatever you just said, it sounded lovely. <laughs> a lot of people from the States tell me what you're telling me now, that, that Italian sounds so beautiful. Yeah. And to me, like, I'm not aware of that, you know? So, yeah, there's uh, just something about it. I mean, Spanish can be that way a little bit, too, but Italian just has something very intrinsically fascinating and, and beautiful, the way it flows, you know? And, yeah. um and I, I was on a I was on a cruise one time, and I ended up in a, a sauna. And these two guys were were going on and on. They were speaking Italian. I was just eavesdropping. And even those guys sounded like it sounded cool. I'd rather hear a woman speak it, but uh, but just about the flow of it, you know, and just the cadence. Yeah. And it has, like you said, it has a musical rhythm to it, which yeah, you kind yeah. of admire. So so anyway, you were a political science major, and you made the what what possessed you to say, you know what, I'm I'm kind of like got to make a uh, move midstream here and change. What was there some kind of catalyst that occurred to you that said uh, it, it just like a snap decision or how did it go? Well, uh, after my degree, I was, I was, I started working in tourism actually. Oh, okay. And I was making a lot of money. I was touring, I was a, a tour guide and a tour escort. So I was taking mostly American people like from big corporate companies that were coming to Italy. And I was taking them around Italy, you know, visiting the big cities. And, uh, I was having a lot of fun, but, uh, this, this, I really like to sing a lot, but I didn't think it was possible. Like I thought it was just a hobby 
All right. Because that's what my father taught me all, all my life. And uh, but I met some people that were actually doing it for a living. Uh, one day I went to a casting for a musical in Italy. And that is already something really strange because, OK, nowadays they're, ma- they're starting to make some pretty good musicals, but we really don't know how to make them as good as you do. You know, it's not our stuff, really. It's not. But anyway, this big, famous Italian artist called Renato Zero, he had a casting for this uh, for this musical. I went and he went crazy, like for my voice. He said he stopped everyone. He said, yeah, that's a beautiful voice. That's such a strange voice. You know, it's so recognizable. I like it. I like it. And he came up to the stage and he said, can you dance? I said, well, I like dancing. Well, OK, OK. And I sang the song without any uh, instrumental. I just sang it, you know, a cappella. Right. And so there was a guitarist there. And he said, you know, if you want to sing that song again, I can accompany you with my guitar. And so I met this guitarist. And from there, everything started because uh, he actually was aware of uh, Berklee College of Music. He knew Berklee College of Music. And so, like in probably six months or so, uh, me, the guitarist, and other musicians, friends uh, from Rome, we uh, left Rome and we went to Berkeley. And so at that point, I started to take it seriously, you know, when I, when I got to Berkeley. Yeah. Well, wow. how was that experience for you at Berkeley? Oh, that was like one of the best times of my life. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Because uh, not too much because I was traveling because I've been traveling all my life. And so I was used to that. But uh, OK, getting to this college and, uh, you know, as soon as I walked in, I started uh, hearing all the people, you know, uh, actually practicing or exercising in the hall of the uh, of the school, like singing, uh, like the gospel choir, you know, they were grouped in the hall and they were like, you know, having fun. And I went, oh my God, listen to these voices. They're, they're beautiful. And so people from all over the world, musicians, really international school. And, uh, and I was living on my own for the first time. So, you know, put that all together. Yeah. It was like, great. You were and having a ball live concerts in the school at night and meeting a lot of people, getting a chance to sing with uh, people from the States, people from Argentina and so on. You know, it was really nice, beautiful. Well, do you stay in touch with some of your alma mater back there? Well, you know what? I uh, There's a group on uh, LinkedIn. I'm in this group, but I really... I don't follow it that much, right. no. But I have some people here in Italy that have been to uh, to Berkeley that I'm still friends with. One of one of them actually is is uh, he's a great keyboard player, and he's been touring uh, some time with uh, Pink also on okay. his tours. Alessandro Alessandroni, he's really good. So I keep in touch with him and other people too from the states. You know what? I'm gonna when we finish, I'm gonna get a list of some of these names because I love the way you say it, but I'm not grasping it completely. <laughs> okay. If you told me to write it down right now, I don't think I could do a good job of it. But yeah, yeah hey, I know. It would wanna... be the same for me with with American names, maybe, maybe. Yeah. Hey, um, before we dig into, um, I want to play, uh, you know, your your new song. But before we do that, who is your current favorite artist? Like, you know, American, Italian, international. Like, who do you like um, off the top of your head? Is somebody that you really admire and follow? Well, okay, I uh, I used to follow, and she still is my icon. Amy Winehouse, because okay. uh, I really love uh, the way she writes. She is like an amazing songwriter. Right. I love her lyrics. I really, you know, I get really into them. And I, I usually sing a lot of her songs when I when I do cover songs. Uh, but she's not here with us anymore, unfortunately. Yeah, so sadly. I love all the, all the, you know, great voices of pop, like Beyonce or... Pink. I love Pink a lot and Lady Gaga, even though at the beginning I didn't like her because I right. thought she was too, you know, a commercial or so. I said at the beginning, you know, the first video, I said, who is this girl? What, what, what is she doing? Lady Gaga, that name. I said, like, what is it? <laughs> and then just yesterday, I watched a video of her singing the national anthem. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. I mean, she's really good. She, she's amazing. Yeah, she's the and, real deal uh, for sure. And then I love, uh, I love Bruno Mars. 
And uh, lately, I really, uh, I'm into this new uh, album that just got released, I think, a few days ago, or, or at least in Italy, Janelle Monet, okay. because she, she's, she's like Prince, you know, and Prince is another one of my idols. So I really like her too, yeah. Janelle Monet, how'd I do? Yeah. Janelle Monet. Janelle I sang Monet. one of her songs in a, in a nice group that I had, which unfortunately is now on pause, let's say. It was like a, a band of uh, eight musicians, plus me singing all funk and rock songs, all rearranged in a funk mood. Oh, that was so great. But right. the problem is that it's not easy to uh, play live in Italy. That yeah. would have been a great group in the States, but in Italy, um, not many not many clubs to play live gigs, unfortunately. Right. So, um, well, let's talk a little further about that. But first of all, we're going to play this new hit song, and this is called Freedom by Linda Gambino. <laughs> your love babe i love that song tell us about freedom this is the freedom oh. of that song it's it's like i hear the freedom in your voice when you're singing this oh i love that so oh, I'm, i have to write this down i'm gonna oh, oh you it. keep your pen handy girl i'll give you pearls i'll give you plenty <laughs> of pearls you know the thing is that though that when i hear you sing i'm hearing like um you have this energy of um, exuberance and delight in your voice that I'm saying I'm hearing even like things that were like classic monster hits in the 60s, like Diana Ross or something back in the, that time. I'm hearing um, that style of quality, not that you sound anything like those songs, but but you're yeah. on the same bar 
of of wow. yeah this is really this is really worth li- not just worth listening to but th- i'm i'm strapping in to like i want to be glued to this you know <laughs> so <laughs> oh Dave, that's wonderful thank so, you so much yeah so let me ask you about your past like how did you get this ingrained into your dna the the stylistic uh sound that you have there was something growing up that you you were listening to what when you were a, a kid and before you even started writing songs this must have been yeah. you know you're because of your brain i could tell the way you're wired with language and everything you were mm-hmm. recording all these things and putting it away for another day so so tell us what you were listening to girl i want, I don't want the secret sauce here well well you know i was i have to say again that maybe it sounds strange but when i got to the states just Think of all the music that goes with all the stuff on TV or the music that you hear when you walk into a hotel or that you when you walk into a mall, you know, and uh, that I absorbed all that. And so when I came back to Italy and all my friends were listening to Italian music, which if it's traditional Italian music or classical Italian music is really beautiful, but if it's like pop music with some exceptions. I mean, it, it, I don't like it. I don't like it. So I was different right, <laughs> in comparison right. to all the others. Of course, I wasn't the only one because, uh, so I had in my mind all these great voices like uh, Shaka Khan, Whitney Houston, Anita Baker, uh, Tony Braxton. Those were my, you know, the, 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 the artists I was listening to. You mentioned and, all uh, of my faves right there. I love all oh, those wow. people. Yeah, I listen to and all of those. George Michael, George yeah. Michael. Right. Uh, those were the voices. Uh, those are the voices. I mean, they're they're uncomparable. And so, um, because I have this, like, uh, say, uh, uh, it's not a common voice. So I got to sing in bands when I got to Italy that were doing, you know, soul music, R and B, uh, blues, funk, as I said. And so I learned even more. Uh, of these genres of music and the artists that make this music. So uh, I guess I drank it all and it's in me, of course. So uh, it comes probably out and I'm happy uh, that it comes out also in a, in a song like Freedom, which is a pop EDM pop song, let's say. But yeah. you can tell, I guess, that the voice underneath is kind of soulful and uh, yeah. Yeah, well, EDM, I, I got to do a little more digging into that because I'm interested in putting uh, more of that on this show. But from where I sit and when I look out on the landscape of music, I see that, you know, the United States has an advantage in that we're just this melting pot of people from all over the world come here, you know, for musical experiences. And, you know, it, it, I mean, it started way before the English thing, like, you know, with the Beatles that came here, but they took all the all the blues and the, you know, the yeah. really, I mean, the Stones did the same thing. They came here and they, they like reinvented it. So it goes back and forth and back and forth. And I think it's, um, the advantage of being here is that it's such a big melting pot and there's so many influences that get, you know, put to, to the test here, which, which is kind of cool. But, um, and for smaller countries, you just don't have that, you know, population wise, I guess. But it's nice to have all the cultural experiences of being like, like I see where the EDM is like really big in Europe and, and South America, especially yeah. with these DJs, you know, they're, I mean, they pack yeah. these stadiums full of people. It's pretty amazing. Right, right, right. Yeah. So, so, but I didn't think EDM was actually what I know it is now, because at the beginning I thought it was just electronic music made by DJs. Yeah. Now I know that when they, when you say EDM, it's actually the pop songs that you hear on radios and on all the you know like uh, digital stores like Spotify. For pop, it's actually pop music. Right. It, it's not really you know just the DJs. It's I mean lots of vocals and singers and good singers on them. On yeah, the I, I like your shirt. I just saw when you backed up. You got New York on there. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, there we go, girl. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so so I guess it's a hybrid, like like all music. It's constantly evolving and transforming and moving and shaping and changing. Um, but I'm I'm really digging it in the music that you're creating too. It just sounds like this is fun. This is fun and it's a good song, you know. So hey, yeah. tell tell us, take us into the studio, Linda. Um, are you recording in Rome? Is that okay? Where- uh- 
for this song, well, I, I, I had many different experiences for all the songs that I wrote. Uh, for this one, for Freedom, uh, I went to record vocals and uh, to meet the producer of this song because I, I wrote the lyrics on this song. But uh, the music comes from this producer. His name is Pachi. Uh, actually, his name is Pasquale Chotola, also known as Pachi. Pasquale Ochola. Pasquale Chotola from Chotola. Naples. Yeah, he's a tall guy, tall <laughs> young guy. And um, and uh, on this song, my name is Linda, a.k.a. Sand, because my voice is a bit sandy, you know, and yeah, also like because it. it's time for the sand and the beach. Yes, yeah. So um, he sent me, you know, we, we, we met each other because of the publishers of these, of this song. And uh, we started to uh, talk about music and, you know, find a common ground of what we liked and our taste and everything. So uh, then we came up with this song and, uh, and then I went to uh, Pachi's studio. It's called RT 73 down in Naples. And we recorded the voice there. And um, and then, of course, it was mixed and mastered. And, and then we're releasing it through Smilax Publishing and Lion Music in Italy and hopefully all over the world on digital stores, of course. I hope the radios are going to pick it up and start playing it everywhere. So, so this uh, is part of your new EP that is coming out, correct? This is Strong Freedom is a single, but I am I'm planning to put out an EP, yes, probably after the summer okay. with some other songs that I already have that I wrote in Great. Uh, Do you have a title for that record yet? Not yet. No, oh, I'm no, no. I have to help you. One's going to come out in this interview, I'm telling you. It always happens. <laughs> <laughs> good yeah, things great. happen on the Dharmic evolution. <laughs> <laughs> That's hey, a good name, yeah. Hey, what do you do? You know, it's a funny thing because um, if you look in the in the English dic dictionaries, uh, there's no such word as dharmic. So it, I always tell people, it's okay to invent your own word. There's dharma, you know, and, right, and dharmic right. evolution is about becoming who you're supposed to become, you know, like in your life. Why were you put here? So we're all exploring our dharmas, you know, so that, right. that so... Um, I wanted to ask you about what do you like to do outside of music? What's fun for you? Because you, you're a real committed artist. I can tell you've got a tremendous work ethic just by the short time that I've got to know you. You know, you seem like you're always on. You're going, 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 right? <laughs> are you a high energy bunny? I could tell you are. You know, I'm, I'm, I really like to, uh, I mean, if I'm at home, I like to relax and do nothing. I'm right. kind of lazy. Okay. But uh, when, it, when it comes to music, like if I'm on stage or if I'm at rehearsals, I really have a lot of energy. And at the beginning, you know, I, I, I was telling people like I didn't even I wasn't even aware of it. But now I am really aware of it. I really have a lot of energy and I'm so happy about this. And uh, I don't want to disappoint you, but I'm really into music. Like my interest is, is mostly that. So I, I have fun doing that. Right. So for the rest of the time, OK, I read, I go to the scene when I can of course I like to walk a lot I really like yeah that's something that really relaxes me so for example yeah. I wake up early in the morning and I go with my car I drive downtown I'm not far away park my car and then I start walking a lot in the city like early in the morning when there's not many people and um and then uh I also like to uh Sometimes I do translations, and this is something that I do on the side, and I really love to do that, you know, to find words and to learn how to express myself and find the right word to translate a phrase. I don't know. That's kind of weird, but I love to do that, too. <laughs> And, um, yeah, travel when I can. Uh, mostly I love to come back to the States and I've been back many times, fortunately, recently, like three years ago now to Nashville, like three or four times. And, um, yeah, this, you know, I don't know, just music takes all my life actually. And, uh, I have a lot of girlfriends that tell me, I see them, they're really into going out with this guy or that guy or what's happening to men in Italy. They used to be, you know, one way, but now they're, they're like, they don't care about women anymore and they're not as romantic as they were before. What's going on and this and that, but I'm always into music and that is really 
I don't know. That's strange. I know. That's not good. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you mentioned you do uh, translations now. Do you do translations from Italian into other languages, English, or, or uh, how do you, yeah. what is? Just Italian to English or English to Italian. So let me ask you this. If I was to take one of my songs and want to sing it in Italian, could you coach me through that? Would you be the person that I would? Because I know that the translations come, sometimes the, the meanings can flip and you have to, you have wow. to adjust the, you know, the lyrics to make That's it make right. sense. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. so you yeah, would sure. be my go-to girl then. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I thought that the other way around because I uh, I have some friends uh, and I wrote some songs with them. But at the beginning, they called me because they wanted to translate uh, to adapt actually their lyrics that were Italian into English. Okay. And so, of course, it can't be a literal translation. You have to adapt it because the metric of the words of the English language and the Italian language are really is really really different. Yeah. Right. So, if you if you write something in English to adapt it into Italian, it's not an easy job, you know, because we have all these long words and as yeah. you said, melodic, right? So there's, right. A, there's a lot of work there. Like to arrivederci. Do. <laughs> <laughs> arrivederci. Yeah. Where do you pick that in a, in, a, in a song? You know, it's already complicated. Right. That right. is that is what actually is changing now in the Italian pop music. That right. now the Italian songwriters are finding a way of using a language in songs that fits into the pop rhythm more than before. Right. And that I really like a lot. I'm yeah. not able to do that real, not very much. Yeah. It's difficult for, with the Italian language. Yeah. Yeah. I like the, I like your chill factor. I like what you just described. You know, you, you just chill out and you're, you're totally in, you know, invested in music in so many ways, but, but you, you do get to do those boring things like drive to the Mediterranean, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, oh, do, God, do you see I'm so turning boring. green with jealousy here. <laughs> hey, by the way, next time you're in Nashville, just, you know, send me a note that you're going and, uh, you know, we'll hook up and have a cup of coffee because I'm oh, there so often. Great. Yeah, that'd be great. Oh, so I, I've met so many people like my friend, um, Susan Moranti from Australia, uh, mm -hmm. She's been there a bunch of times, so so we we hooked up and had had drinks and finally got to know each other. She was a guest on the show, so I always love to 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 hang out with people who have been on the show because we have so much in common, you know. But I think, what do you think, Linda? It's time to play. Why did I lie? Here we go. <laughs>
card you sent me once The one with the sea and the clouds and black and white You'll never find someone who loves you like I do, you wrote I smiled, but those words still linger Tell me, why did you lie, Linda? Why did you? Right. Because I am uh, an independent woman, let's say. Okay. Uh, First of all, because I like it. But I've always had this thing that I I don't want to be trapped into something that I don't like. So uh, most of the times I run away. Uh, But for this song, um, it was a time of my life where I was struggling a lot with big problems, like my father had just passed away. I mean, it was really a sad time of my life. And I met this guy and uh, we started going out together and he fell in love with me. But I was my mind was like away. You know, I was not into any relationship. You weren't ready. I didn't didn't really care too much about it. Yeah. Uh, I was having a lot of fun because we were doing crazy things together, having fun at night, going to clubs, listening to music. But then all of a sudden, when I when I noticed that you know he was falling in love, I just ran away and I told him that I didn't love him. Then right. after probably something like maybe five six years or something, I found a card that he had sent me with uh, something that he had wrote for me, like a poetic thing, really romantic thing. And all of a sudden, you know, I, I, my heart skipped a beat. I said, oh my God, but this guy, I mean, he was really beautiful, you know, to me and he really loved me. And I told him I didn't love him, but maybe I did, you know. And so from there, I wrote the song and I wrote it really quick, like in five minutes and it was done. So, right. uh, yeah, I like that song so, for this so- so you probably you were not ready for love. You were you were still grieving. Yeah, you know, exactly. When your dad passed, you know, and you probably had no idea that you were you were just in that state, you know, and and probably you know when you're in that state, you, your your walls are so up, you're not even aware of it that, that there's no opportunity for, you know, for his love to penetrate your sphere, you know, yeah, you're just like exactly. yeah. So did you ever reach out to him and say, hey, I finally read the note. <laughs> I did. I did after, like, when Why Did I Lie came out, which yeah. is about five years ago, I uh, I tried to uh, look him up on Facebook, and I did find him, uh, although I knew people that, I mean, friends in common. But anyway, I, I wrote to him on Facebook, and uh, he wouldn't answer my messages. But then uh, at the end, he did, and I said, hey, how are you, this and that. You know, you remember that card that you sent me? Well, anyway, I wrote this song, and it's about it's about us. So he said, well, thank you. At least, you know, it, something happened because of that love. You know, he was he was not really happy anyway to, <laughs> to hear from me. Right. But, uh, so, okay. Wrong time, wrong place. And him and his wife and his kids, so he's fine. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yes, indeed. I think I struck gold here. She's a translator. She's a tour guide. She goes down to the sea. She has a little castle down by the sea. It's like an all-in-one deal. I got to get to know Linda better. Right back to the story of Linda Gambito right after this. Have you connected with your gratitude today? I think I have something that will help inspire you. It's the brand new release from James Kevin O'Connor. Gratitude, recorded on Music Row in Nashville, Tennessee with producer Kim Copeland and team, is James' third full-length album in four years. Ten amazing songs, each one a different story about the emotions, journeys and experiences that you and I have lived. Songs like Dreamer, Jesus Teaches, Tango On and 51 Shades of Grey. And of course, title track, 
gratitude. Pick up the brand new CD today with amazing artwork and photography at iTunes, CD Baby and Amazon. Or simply go to jameskevinoconnor.com for your download right now. Send someone that you love a copy of Gratitude today. It might be exactly what they need in their life right now. Gratitude, the new release by James Kevin O'Connor. So uh, what, are your, what are your plans for coming back to the States, if all? When, when you do, like, do you, have a, do you have an idea of, you know, why, what's going to happen? Like, what, do you, what plans do you have uh, as well, far as music? Well, no. I have okay. to be honest. Right. No. Uh, I can tell you this. Uh, I've worked with, with uh, some authors and songwriters in, in Nashville, like uh, Michael Farona and John Denny. Uh-huh. And we produced three songs together uh, that are on my album. Uh, one is Hap- Happy Now, the other one is I'm Alive, and the other one is uh, Hello, Goodbye. And uh, we still keep in touch. Uh, with Mike Verona, always we always chat on uh, WhatsApp and you know Facebook and and he's coming over to see me this summer. Great. He's coming to Italy and he's going to stay at my place. So in exchange, I'm going to come over <laughs> at least just for a vacation. Then what happens with music? Who knows? Uh, he's got my song, so um, he um, you know he tries to um, how do you say it? Uh, propose them to companies looking for, you know, for music for their commercials and things right. like that. Pitch them, yeah. Oh, pitch them, right, exactly. Yeah. Oh, you never know. Something might happen. And by the <laughs> way, happy belated birthday. You Pisces, you, right? You're a Pisces? I'm Pisces, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. What are you? I am a Cancer. A I'm, Cancer, so yeah, water. At, end of no. June. Yeah, my water sign. I'm the crab, you know. Uh-huh. It's like... Yeah. And, and it's it's so so appropriate because when I was a kid, I'd go in the ocean for five hours at a clip. They couldn't even get me out of the water. It's like you yeah, know. me same thing. I remember one of my most vivid memories, uh, and the one I, I like best is when I was living in Los Angeles. Uh, I, I had this apartment house, and uh, but the condominium had a swimming pool. Right. So I was going to school every day, coming back from school, except for those cold days, which in Los Angeles are not many. I would go down to the pool, dive into the pool and stay there for hours and hours and hours, just like like a Pisces should do. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. And you know what? I think it's time to play Revolution. And this is the video for when we get this on the YouTube channel. So check this out, Revolution. made my plan framing money with my band to be in love forever like in dreamland oh well it couldn't be more naive the whole world was picking up speed it's just a rat race it's getting hard to breathe it's very Yeah. 
stars and the galaxies that was beautiful <laughs> beautiful revolution yeah. so t tell me uh, the video for those of you guys who didn't see it there's a the bass player has got this eight string bass it's very very cool you guys will see it on the video channel so tell us about that song a really really awesome song and i love the way you go up with your voice on that you know you almost get into like chipmunk land how do you do that <laughs> You know, it's like a Mariah Carey thing or something. That is really no, cool. No, 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 no. Yeah. I got a big, big voice. So to go up, it's not really easy. But, you know, when, when I like the song, then, of course, and if I write it, I write it for myself, the melody. So it fits my voice, of course. Yeah. Um, that was actually there is also an Italian version of this song. I mean, it's half in English and half in Italian. Oh, I love those. Uh, because um, the, the songwriter I wrote this song with, Marco Jantoska, uh, he told me once, he said, Linda, all right, you've been to the States, but, you know, you're Italian. Will you please write a song in Italian for once? <laughs> I said, all right, okay, I'll do it. But not the whole song, just half of it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, at least half of it. So I wrote the uh, verses in Italian and then the chorus remains in English. So it came out pretty good, actually. And I really like the verses in Italian, too. I, that's weird, but I do. Um, so I wrote it with this with this friend, Marco Jantoska. Uh, I met him. He's from the south of Italy, near Naples. And we met because uh, we were trying to get our music uh, to be published by a label. That actually happened, but then we regretted it because that label really didn't help us much. But anyway, so we uh, we got to know each other, and um, and I said, Marco, because he's a guitarist and and a singer. I said, Marco, don't you have any you know any song that you wrote that maybe you just wrote you know the uh, the uh, chord progression you know like guitarists sometimes do. Yeah. You didn't put any melody on it. You have something. So he sent me like three or four of these, and I wrote the melody to Revolution. And the, and the and the lyrics, of course. And the first thing that came up with me was London Bridge is falling down, falling down. So from right. there, I got the whole song that you know everything is changing, and uh, like everything is seems like collapsing, and uh, you know al almost a catastrophe in politics, in uh, terrorism, in I mean all bad things are actually happening, and yeah. sometimes really scared, especially here in Europe, you know. Yeah. Uh, but um, and all this actually also changes a lot of what our personal life is. You know, the plans we make for our future, for our kids, or the relationship we have because everything is happening through social media. I mean, everything is changing so fast. Yes. And so, uh, of course, I have a happy ending because uh, that's, my, that's my style. So I really hope that this revolution uh, becomes an evolution and uh, everything, you know, goes for the better and turns up real good for the evolution of of all of us of our dharma yeah yeah exactly tell, you you love performing right? i do yeah i could tell i could tell the the energy you have um just you know seeing what you've done even in your videos you know you're really amped up when you get up on stage and that's that's oh, yeah. you're in you're in your right place you're in your dharma girl hey um tell me about tell me about uh just real quick social media um we're we're friends on Facebook and I think you're on yeah. Instagram too if I if I remember yeah, correctly. Yeah. Are those yeah. you are those your favorites? I really like Instagram. Yeah. I really do like it because I like taking pictures, uh, selfies and stuff. Um, so um, you know you you just write something not too a long not too not too long story, but. Um, I like it. It's quick. It's immediate. And uh, even though you can't really post, promote your stuff too much, but uh, still, I really have fun with it. 
Yeah. Um, and then, of course, I'm a lot on Facebook because there you have a little bit more space to promote your things and to write a little bit more about yourself or things that happened to you or memories, you know, about your personal or musical life. So I'm there, Linda Gambino Music, both on Instagram and Facebook. Yes, dear. How about Twitter? Are you a Twitter girl? I'm not a Twitter okay. girl. Yeah. I'm on, I don't understand it. Like, you know, it's, it's funny how... Um, you know, I talked about this before on this show that there's, you know, about a year and a half ago, I was on like everything, every social, and I got rid of probably, you know, I only have like three or four things now because it's, it's just a time suck. You know, it just takes like, I don't want to learn all these things, you know? No, no, I'm not a good Twitter girl at yeah, all. Yeah. Uh, and I don't even want to learn it. I don't know. Yeah. So Maybe the, one day I'll have somebody do it for me, but uh, um, I'm not into that. No, I think anyway, f- okay, Facebook now, they had some problems recently, but I think Facebook and Instagram are really big. Yeah, they are the two two giants. Yeah. Tell me, tell me as we're wrapping up here, what are you looking forward to mostly for, um, for like the next year for, for your career? Like if you had your wish, like what would you do with your career from where it is now to where you want to be as far as performance, creativity, uh, business model, um, and, you know, nothing's more important than the other except what's in you. What are you feeling like right now? Yeah. Well, I, w- I would start from, from this song I have now just released, Freedom. Um, and uh, I hope this song has the opportunity to uh, go beyond, the, uh, uh, beyond Italy, you know, and can spread to at least Europe and maybe even more. I think it has the potential to do that because what I would really like to do is go and sing live on in, in festivals all over Europe. That's yes. what I'd like yeah. on big stages with a band that supports me to sing my music, the one that I wrote and all some cover songs of, of the artists that I like and that suit my voice as well. And I think that would make a real nice show because I've got the energy to do it and I'd have a lot of fun and, uh, that would really make me happy. And you've Absolutely. got the material to do it also. And I, don't, I also I've, have the material. I almost yeah. forgot to ask you, um, do you like performing um, as a piano player or do you just prefer, you know, work on the stage, center stage with the mic? Yeah, that's what I do. I sing and, uh, yeah, I move around. Right. And uh, I try to put a lot of emotion in it. But uh, the piano, I can play the piano, but just when I when I write my songs. Right. But, I mean, I can, I can play simple chords, and if I want to, you know, I'd love to do that also on stage one day and maybe play my own songs with, with keys, you know, or with the piano. Right. But uh, right now I usually use the piano just to write the songs. Okay. I did on the, on the video. It was really fun. Easy, easy chords. Right. You look, you look like <laughs> yeah. a total maestro to me, girl. Well, yeah, <laughs> I can <I'm> fake it. <laughs> <laughs> Linda, I'm so happy you came on the Dharmic Evolution. I, I really just wanted to thank you for being here uh, to share your music, your personality, your stories, and you know, so much um, good wishes and luck to you with your career. And I really hope this thing takes off. I can't wait to see the. Uh, effect of this new song that uh, people are going to pick up on it's going to be awesome thank you so much james for having me and you know what it's been wonderful it's been really like chatting to a friend and i actually lost you know i didn't know when we were on and when we are i mean it was just chatting with you the whole time so i really enjoyed it very much so all the best to you and to dharmic evolution too and thanks for having me why did i lie freedom and the video revolution. Linda Gambino from Italy, also an American in her own right, by going to Berkeley. I think that makes her an American. That's pretty cool. Hey, uh, if you want to check out Linda and support her, I wish you would. Go to uh, her website and check out all of the links in the um, show notes here on this show and look for her video coming out soon as well. So uh, that was a really, really cool interview. Loved being in Roma, Italy and got the education and got entertained by her today. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. And if you have not taken advantage of the Dharmic Evolution Facebook community page, please do so. If you've got a new song, a new video, you're playing a gig somewhere. 
you can go over there to this site and post what's going on in your musical life. Be part of the indie community that is growing around the world. Also, if you're looking for coaching, a lot of you are. I have three areas that I'm really, really good at and I want to share and help you guys. Podcast training, life transition, or media coaching. I can help you in any and all three of these areas. You may be lost in podcast land and not know how to get it together. You may be a cubicle rat and lost in corporate America. I know there's so many out there, right? You just got to get out and do your own thing and you're not sure where to turn. Or you just may need some help on figuring out the intense and confusing maze of social media and find that you have been spinning in a circle. I know, I know, I know. If any of these frustrations sound familiar, reach out to me, James, at the JamesO'ConnorAgency.com. I can and will help you get the wheels firmly back on the track. I also want to share with you, if you have not heard it yet, the new Storyteller series is out now on the Dharmic Evolution. Doing it at least a couple of times a month where I take you in the studio with me and I share all the stories. We're starting with the Gratitude album, 10 songs, one song per show. And I tell you stories about who played on it, who's hot in Nashville. Pretty much everybody playing with me is hot. That's why I hang with these guys, because I want to be hot like them. And uh, Kim Copeland, her team, uh, I tell you all about how we go in and we tear a song apart, put it back together, and lo and behold, boom, we have an album just like that. So check out the Storyteller series on the Dharmic Evolution. Current one is all about, um, it's DE-166, and it's called, um, what is the name of it? There are so many. We did Gratitude, we did Dreamer, and More Than a Reason is out right now. That's DE-166. I also want to invite you to please stop by iTunes and give us a review on the show. If you have not, please subscribe, rate, and review the show, this Dharmic Evolution show that is now around this world in 71 countries, uncovering talent everywhere around the world. So uh, if you would do that, the show uh, would really benefit, and the other people um, that are on this show would benefit as well. So that's it for me today. Your host for the Dharmic Evolution, James Kevin O'Connor, singer, songwriter, audio video artist, master storyteller, and uh, international talent agent. Also, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So until the next time when we meet again, I'll either see you on the socials or I'll see you from the stage.